Hey guys, Peter James here, I hope you're doing well. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a keyboard player, producer, sound designer. I've had the privilege of playing on over 40 Hillsong United and Hillsong Worship albums over the years, as well as touring with them. Um, and more recently, I've gotten into sound designing even more and had my sounds feature on a ton of TV series and movies, like The Walking Dead, The Purge, The Bachelorette, The Bachelor, um, the Morning Show and a bunch of other ones, but I say all that to say this. Um, I'm a sound designer. That's what I do. I create sounds, I create templates, um, and this is my live template. So yeah, let's jump in. Okay, so what you're seeing here is the Complete Worship Bundle 2. It's a complete overhaul from the original Complete Worship Bundle. Um, originally, I was just going to do a little refresh of my Complete Worship Bundle. I was going to improve the patches, redesign the layout, all of that, but instead I ended up doing a complete overhaul of my personal template that I use at Hillsong Church. I wasn't happy with the layout, with the ambient pad section. Um, I wanted a more control over um, accessing all my main patches. Um, I wanted to improve the effects section. Um, yeah, so basically I built my own template from the ground up, um, and that's the pro version of what you're seeing in front of you. Um, that has all my third-party presets for all my um, third-party plugins and instruments and everything. But I know not everyone's going to have all the plugins that I do. Um, so this is the Complete Worship Bundle 2 Mainstage native version. All you need for this is Mainstage. You don't need any additional plugins. You don't need to get any additional bundles from Multitracks. Everything you see and hear in this walkthrough video comes with this product. Um, it comes with 12 gigs of my own custom samples of, I think I've more than doubled uh, the patch count in here compared to the old version. It now comes with my custom Prophet 5, OB6, um, Big Sky, and even my Juno 60 samples. I just recently got a Juno 60, um, which is kind of a sentimental keyboard for me because the Juno 60s is uh, the very first analog keyboard that I ever played. And I also played that keyboard on the first ever Hillsong United studio album. Um, so you also have uh, custom Juno 60 samples in this template as well. I've improved the ambient drone section. It now comes with three ambient drones instead of one. Um, and they loop indefinitely, so you're not going to have them cutting out after 12 minutes. I think the original version um, just had an audio file which cut out after 12 minutes. It comes with OB ambient pads, which are currently the best-selling ambient pads on multitracks, which is really, really cool to see uh, because I really love my OB6 uh, partner with my Big Sky. It's really fat, warm, um, big-sounding ambient pad. Then we've got the atmospheric ambient pads, which are kind of my default that I go to. Um, they're created with real string pizzicato, samples with reverb, etc. Um, they almost sound like a guitar. Uh, picking. It's very organic, so I love using those. Um, and then the third ambient pad that we've got in here is the Dream Shimmer ambient pads. And this one complements the others really, really well because it's got um, octave shimmer built in to the sample. So you can mix all those to taste and um, kind of customize how that sounds. Um, I'll quickly do an overview of the template before I get into audio examples, but if you do want to just jump ahead to audio examples, if you go down to the bottom of this video, there's going to be audio chapters there, so you can just skip across. Uh, but for everyone else who wants to hear a little bit more detail about the template, um, we'll start off with the ambient drone section. So we've got a high pass filter, which um, takes out your low end if you want to clean up the low end. You can add reverb to your ambient uh, drones. Um, you can add octave shimmer to the reverb as well if you want um, even more kind of ambient shimmer. You've got a motion a knob there that you can add a slow um, auto pan just to give a bit of motion. You can add pulse to your ambient pad um, which syncs up to the tempo for each song. Um, and then we've got width which is a really cool um, handy thing to have. So width just... Um, widens it, takes it away from the um, center and kind of creates space for your um, piano and main instruments to cut through. So that's a really handy thing to have. Um, obviously down the bottom you can see all 12 keys. Um, you can select whichever one you want. And then on the nano controller I've just got it set up so I can push play and stop it. Um, and you can obviously set that up exactly how you want to with the blender pads. You've even got the low pass filter over this side which you can brighten or mellow out your pads in real time. Making it really easy to kind of 
uh, fade it out um, tastefully and take off all the top end and blend it out. So that's the ambient um, drone pad section. Obviously on the right hand side you've got uh, draw bars for your organ um, and that's mapped to all the organs. So wherever you're playing an organ in your set, those draw bars uh, will manipulate the organs draw bars. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so you can probably guess that um, I'm using a Korg Nano Control 2 based on the layout that you see in front of you. I always want my hardware to match my software. I don't want to be looking at my screen and then looking at my hardware and it looks different. Um, it's just another thing for me to kind of have to think about um, when I'm playing live. So that's what I'm using uh, with my live setup. So let's just quickly um, explain this layout. Uh, so what you've got over here in the main instrument section is access to all your main instruments just in that one little section. So I can go Grand, Rhodes, uh, Second Rhodes, Whirly, Organ. Um, above them I've got um, control over certain um, parameters that I like um, to have really quick access to for those main instruments. Um, you've got your patch up, patch down options um, at the top there. Um, but the way I've designed this template is so I can access all those main instruments from any other patch. So if I go down to, let's say, one of the analog multis, you'll notice that the main instrument section stays the same, but these all change. Your effects section also stays the same uh, at the very end as well, so you can access them. Um, but it means I can add a grand piano, Rhodes, any of these main instruments to any of my other patches, which makes for seamless transitions. Obviously, we all know that in worship, it's all about a worship set, not individual songs. It's all about your transitions between songs. It's all about um, the progression from start to finish. It's not about playing four, five, six separate worship songs. Um, it's about how we transition from one song to another and you don't really want to have to be changing patches between each song and having awkward silence and um, having to find a patch for a spontaneous moment that you didn't realize was coming um, and trying to import a patch for that song, etc, etc. You want to have access to all your patches no matter where you are um, in your patch list and that's what I've done here. Um, so for any of these I can go down and I can um, access all those main instruments there. Also, if I go back to the main instruments, um, I've got full control over a bunch of different parameters uh, for my main instruments, you've got two low pass filters. Um, I have all my main instruments uh, typically routed through low pass filter one, and all my pads and other um, patches routed through low pass filter two. It means I can have a bright piano with a mellow pad, it means I have independent control over the brightness of those. Um, you've got um, in the effects section over here, you've got um, access to delays and reverbs for anything routed out low pass filter one, which is all my main instruments. Um, you've got control over your delay types, um, ping pong, uh, meaning like, you know, left, right, um, or kind of more mono um, for both your 1 8 and 1 8 dotted. You can turn those on and off. You can actually add uh, reverb to just the delays, which is kind of a little trick that I've been doing for years and years. Um, I love having my delays really ambient a lot of the time. Um, so that gives me a reverb on top of just the delays. Um, and then over here you've got access to one of the Hillsong Studio impulse responses. So I went into the Hillsong Studio and actually sampled the room uh, at different perspectives, etc. Um, and created a whole lot of Hillsong Studio impulse responses. So I've uh, put one of the ones that really works well with these main instruments into this bundle. Obviously, um, they're up on multitracks if you want the full bundle, they're Hillsong Studio IRs. So what this basically does is let you add one of those impulse responses to any of the um, main instruments, actually anything that you choose to route out low pass filter one. And it just makes uh, your main instruments sound bigger, fuller, and more realistic, no matter what you put through it. Um, there's something about the um, room uh, that I sampled that just sounds so organic and fat and uh, big. But I'll show you audio examples with and without so you can kind of hear the difference between just using an instrument by itself or um, putting it through that room impulse response. Obviously we've got tap tempo here, it's pretty self-explanatory. Then we've got this um, little button here which I really really like. What it does is it sends everything that's routed out low pass filter 1 to the effects section before this low pass filter. So I know it sounds confusing but basically what it allows you to do is have a completely um, ambient piano without the um, dry signal coming through. I'm going to show you audio examples of this. 
Um, but it just gives you the control to be able to go from a big, bright piano all the way to a um, ambient, um, almost ambient pad-like piano because you're only getting the reverb and delays coming through. Um, so that's a really um, handy thing to have. You've got obviously your delay feedback, which is the length of the delay, how many repeats. Um, you've got a low pass filter just for the delay. Again, it's something that I use all the time because sometimes I want a bright delay, sometimes I want a mellow delay. Instead of having to swap to different um, presets with different delay um, brightness and everything, I've just got it all in the one section which you can add to anything you want. So that's just a quick kind of overview of how the template's laid out, how it all works. Obviously you've got parameters for individual patches as well, which you can see um, in this section here next to the sliders. Um, but that's, yeah, just a quick overview. So let's get on to audio examples. Okay, so we'll start off with the piano because that's probably the default kind of sound that most people go to. Like I said, this is the main stage only version. All you need is main stage. You don't need any third party plugins, etc. So I've used the main stage piano. To be honest, um, the weakest part of main stage, in my opinion, is the pianos. They aren't great, um, but Obviously, I wanted to create a template that didn't require any third-party plugins. But if you do have any extra cash or you want to upgrade your sound, I think the first thing I would do is um, upgrade the piano sound. I'm going to show you what I've done with the uh, main stage piano um, and throw it through some of these effects in the room and everything, which makes it sound a lot more realistic. But it isn't the greatest piano, in my opinion. And that's another reason why I wanted to... Uh, give everyone access to the Complete Worship Bundle 2 Pro, which does have all my third-party presets for all my um, third-party plugins, including uh, my pianos. But anyway, here we go. This is the main stage grand piano. So there you go. Like I said, the main stage piano isn't the greatest, but by adding uh, the room and reverb and delay and um, tweaking some of these parameters, you can get it sounding really um, nice, in my opinion, um, compared to what it would sound like if you just had it dry. Um, anyway, um, that's the grand piano. Let's go over to the Rhodes. Um, I'll probably just switch between both of them. They're two different flavors of Rhodes. Um, there's a really cool feature in this one where you can add... Um, Rhodes delay that actually has overdrive and reverb on the delay so you can get that kind of forever rain um, sound which is a Rhodes going through a delay with overdrive and reverb um, exactly how I've emulated here if you want the exact patch for this uh, that was used on the album that's in the pro version but this is just the main stage only replica of it which sounds really good anyway but for those of you who are purists and want the original uh, patch for that that's in the pro version so here we go
So obviously you can get a bunch of different uh, Rhodes tones just from tweaking a few little things uh, here and there. You can also obviously get it sounding more natural. Um, I'll quickly show you that. Um, so those are the two road sounds. Um, let's go to the Whirly. Um, so the Whirly is actually a Prophet 5 Whirly sample from my Prophet 5. Um, I've also sampled um, completely wet versions of it through my Big Sky. So you've got um, access to the dry, the wet and everything in between. Um, so let's show you this one. And a lot of the time I actually use the wet version of the Whirly partner with other um, instruments, either the main instruments or pads that are down further in the template. But I'll just quickly show you uh, the Whirly, uh, dry, wet, and then partnering with it, maybe a Rhodes old check in. Um, that's such a mood. I love adding that um, completely wet version of the Prophet 5 uh, Whirly 2, like I said, the Rhodes. Um, it works with obviously everything else, grand pianos, pads, everything. It just gives you this really, really nice ambient uh, lead uh, that works with almost everything. And you've probably noticed, actually, if you're paying attention, um, I have the wet version of the Whirly map through the low pass filter too. So when I mellow out uh, the roads it's not mellowing out the wet version of the whirly um, just gives me a little bit more control over the dry and wet um, tone as well as mixing it with those other main instruments okay um, let's go on to the organ um, main stage actually has a really really good organ surprisingly uh, for basically a free um, template it's only $30 main stage I still can't get over how cheap main stage is um, and all the instruments that come with it but the organs actually pretty good for um, a $30 main stage uh, template. I've got it set up by default to work really well with my other main instruments. Um, you can see here I've got a dark EQ and I've got a reverb kind of turned on by default. Um, you've got the rotor access here and also um, in your main instrument section to the left. Um, but like I said, yeah, I've got it set up pretty mellow um, just to partner really well with my other sounds and it almost sounds like a big warm pad the way that I've got it set up. So I'll play it by itself and then um, add those other instruments to it to kind of give you an idea of how it blends.
So there you go. I haven't planned what I'm going to play. I'm just kind of playing off the top of my head. Um, but I'm trying to uh, tweak a few different things here and there. You could see I um, changed the draw bar setting uh, while I was doing that to make it even more mellow. Um, yeah, just trying to give you kind of a feel of what you can do live um, with blending and manipulating different um, parameters as you go. Let's move on to the analog multis. Um, these are my custom samples. I think it's about 12 gigs of samples that come with this uh, main stage template. Um, I'll quickly explain this one. Um, there's four different versions of the analog multi. I'll swap out different aspects of it. So obviously this one um, has a Juno pad in it and doesn't have the Profit 5 drive pad. This one has the drive pad and Juno leads. Um, and this one's got a really cool Juno glide lead at the top. Um, but we'll start with this one, quickly show you the different um, parts um, and then play them all together um, and show you how they work together. So there you go, it's the quick example of what's in the analog multi. Obviously with all the sliders up and the mod wheel all the way up, it just sounds huge. Um, but you can get mellow and sweet and everything kind of in between that by adjusting that mod wheel with the low pass filter um, mapped to that and then adding other um, instruments to it. I obviously added that whirly wet um, lead as well to that from the main instruments. Um, and by the way, this template actually comes with a free main stage masterclass tutorial where I go through the whole complete worship bundle, um, give you tricks and tips on um, having low latency and avoiding audio pops, giving you advice on how to save RAM with aliases. Um, I go through everything that I wish I'd known when I started using main stage um, all those years uh, back, probably 20 years I think I've been using Mainstage for, um, or close to. I think I started off with Logic even. Mainstage wasn't around when I first started using uh, Sounds Live in church. Um, but anyway, um, the Mainstage Masterclass comes free with this. I talk about all that kind of stuff, how to avoid audio pops, how to um, manage patches and templates and pulling sounds in and out and all that kind of stuff. Let's go on to this one. I'll just quickly show you the Juno pad because the other elements are the same as what I just showed you. Um, and I did forget to mention this vintage knob, uh, which you may have seen before in other patches that I've released on Multitracks. Basically what this does is it replicates the vintage knob of my Profit 5. It gives you random pitch variations. So you can get these pads sounding very um, analogy and kind of wobbly. Um, which is the vibe, it's really cool. Um, and you can obviously have none of that or heaps of it. So um, it's up to you how much you dial in. Um, actually, I'll go back to this one because it's only on the Profit 5 pads and OB6. I don't put it on everything, I just put it on the um, elements that I feel need it. Um, so I'll show you, um, for example, it's on the Profit 5 drive, the Profit 5 pad, the OB pad, um, and yeah, so I'll show you that without and with it to show you kind of the analog wobble that you can add to any of these analog multi patches. So it's very subtle, but um, you can probably hear how it's just adding that nice pitch modulation, almost chorusy when they all blend together. Um, so just another added feature uh, that you can play around with. Okay, let's go back to this uh, Juno pad. I'll play just a Juno pad, um, and then I'll blend it in with everything else. Why not uh, show you how it blends?
Okay, so let's go down. Actually, I'm going to skip this one. All the examples are going to be up on multi-tracks. Um, so if you do want to hear every single patch and um, everything that's included um, in this template, just go to multi-tracks, go to the product page and check out the auto examples there. Um, but this one is the Juno um, leads one that I was telling you about. It's got a glide lead in the top, um, which makes it really cool for doing kind of united um, big glide portamento juno lead things so here we go So I really love that patch, um, big Juno 60 lead in the top um, and you can mix that in with all the other um, pads and stuff there. Um, there's a little extra feature that I've added to this template, um, which I'll show you now in this patch. Anything that you see no MIDI allows you to basically freeze that pad. Um, it means you can create an ambient pad um, that just kind of keeps looping indefinitely until you um, unclick the no MIDI. It's really cool feature. You can add this to any other pad. I've just put it on the pads that I um, would use it on the most. I'll quickly show you with um, the one that I've got it on, which is the Profit 5 Big Sky pad. So there you go, just a quick example of how you can freeze that um, pad there. You can obviously play any chord in any version you want. You can even add the octave uh, button to have it um, playing an octave above as well. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of how that uh, custom script works. Okay, so this next one is a Profit 5 Resonance Filter Sweep. It's one of my favorite effect uh, presets that I sampled from my Profit 5. Sampled it with Big Sky, as you can see, uh, wet versions. Um, you got access to um, have just the Big Sky versions octave pitched or vice versa. Um, but anyway, I love just using it uh, for Young and Free songs as an effect um, or as an intro. Um, it's really cool. So I'll kind of show you uh, how I use it. And uh, like all the other ones with no MIDI, you can freeze this one as well. So that's just one way you can kind of use that patch. Um, let's go on to the vintage organ um, single preset. So I've got two different versions. I've got just a basic one which uses um, these draw bars up here. Like I said, I've got the YC88 sitting in front of me and I've mapped the YC88 draw bars to um, the software draw bars in my template. Um, but if you don't have a, another um, controller like I do, um, I do have a nano control version where I've mapped all of these to uh, the draw bars, just so you've got options depending on um, your hardware. Um, let's just go to this one because um, they're identical, but I've got the YC88, so why not use it? Okay, so I'll quickly explain how it's all mapped. It's pretty self-explanatory though. We've got your fast, slow rotor, reverb, extra reverb if you want it, uh, dark EQ preset, C1, um, and percussion. Those I don't usually use for most of the stuff that I play because it's more kind of rock based. If I'm doing more gospel, um, yeah, I might add, for example, the chorus um, and maybe percussion, but I've got it set up there anyway if you guys want to use it. Um, the first three draw bars pulled down like this is the same preset that I use for Firefall Down. Um, 
the recording was actually a real Hammond C3 through, I think it was a 122 or maybe it was a 147, Leslie, I always forget. Um, but that's more of a rock sound. You might want to add overdrive if you want to do that song too. I uh, just get a nice, warm, fat, overdriven organ. So here we go. Um, obviously, you can add that Hillsong reverb on top of it if you want it to sound even more authentic, like it was recorded in a room, not completely dry, like I just showed you. Um, and then if you want more gospel jazz, you probably want to adjust the uh, drawbar settings a little. So I'll try mucking around with drawbars and add that room and give you a, kind of a different flavor you can get out of this organ. was a quick example of that we'll move down now to the complete worship bundle multis i'm not going to spend much time on these you've probably heard them all before um, i have done little tweaks and improved them though they're all there um, i've improved little things like the pulse button has um, a couple of db gain when you turn it on so it matches the levels better when you go um, from just static to sidechain but what i might do is just go down to this one um, just play a quick example for those of you who haven't heard um, these, but like I said, they're all up on multitracks as well if you want to hear the individual audio example. So here we go. So anyway, that's the Young and Free Multi 3 with the kind of pulse pad and uh, function to sidechain all your pads if you want. Um, all of those ones have that function as well if you're wondering. Um, so what I might do is quickly revisit the ambient drones and give you audio examples of those three ambient drones that are in there. I'll tweak a few knobs and show you kind of how you can craft that uh, to your own taste. Um, yeah, so here we go. So there you go, just a quick little example of the ambient drone section. Um, you can actually customize the fade in and fade out speed as well, which I'm going to show you in the main stage 
uh, masterclass tutorial video that comes with this product. Um, it means you can fade it out quicker um, or slower depending on what kind of style you like. I like a slow fade out, um, but then you might want a faster fade out if you're going between different um, ambient drones and trying to fade keys. And so depending on how you like um, to use the ambient drones, that's all customizable. So just to summarize really, really quickly, um, this is the template, the Complete Worship Bundle 2 that doesn't require any other software. This is main stage native. You don't have to purchase anything else from multitracks. You don't have to purchase any other software, plugins, anything. It all just works like I've showed you um, in this walkthrough video. Um, but if you're looking to get the pro version, which is the template that I'm actually using at Hillsong Church, it's basically exactly the same as this, but it uses third-party plugins. Um, it uses a different piano and Rhodes um, and effects plugins, etc. Um, but if you do get this and you want to upgrade to the pro version in the future, um, email support at multitracks.com and they'll give you an upgrade price because the pro version actually comes with two templates, the one I'm showing you now and um, the one that I'm using at Hillsong Church with all my third-party plugins in there. Also, if you're an owner of the original Complete Worship Bundle, um, you should be getting an email from Multitracks as well uh, to give you an upgrade price. But if for some reason you don't get that email, just email them at support at multitracks.com um, with your account details and they'll give you an upgrade price to go from the original version to this one. Uh, like I said before, the Pro version and this version come with a main stage masterclass video as well. I'll go into everything in more depth than I showed you in the walkthrough video. I'll talk about the routing, I'll talk about buffer settings, how to um, not max out your CPU but get a really low latency uh, so it feels better um, when you're playing it live. Um, that comes through with both of these products. So that's the walkthrough video. Uh, once again, thank you so much for your support. It really does help me and release me to keep doing what I'm doing and releasing all my templates and patches on multi-tracks. So yeah, really appreciate it.